Good morning. I rejoice with those who said, let us go to the house of the Lord. May our hearts be filled with rejoicing on this day as we take a moment to give thanks to God for His grace, faith, and word that is our all in all, that, that alone aspect. Today, in our Reformation celebration, we're going to focus in on what's known as the five solas of the Reformation, those five onlys, the alones. Now, it kind of seems funny. You'd think uh, only alone would just be one, but we see, again, how it builds on each other. You know, we, we are saved by what Christ has done. We are saved by believing that. And we're going to just focus in on the importance of what God blessed us with in His truth and the importance of that Word. So may God be with us this morning for this special Reformation service as we join our hearts in worship and praise. It's the fifth Sunday of the month. It is the Reformation Day that uh, when Martin Luther, uh, the great Reformer, uh, made that bold decision. He went up to the castle church doors and pounded on there the 95 theses, his statements, uh, wanting to ask the church leaders, can we talk about this? No, he did not do vandalism. That was the normal place where doors or where announcements were placed. And it was written in Latin to say to the church leaders, let's talk about this. Uh, from there, things built. The uniqueness. October 31st is not about Halloween and trick-or-treating and candy. Not that I'm opposed to enjoying some sweets and candy, because I like that. <laughs> it's the Reformation. It's acknowledging and knowing that God on that date used something. What, what's important and where that developed is tomorrow, November 1st, All Saints Day. Uh, and again, there we celebrate how God makes us all saints, not by our works and actions, but what Christ has done for us. We are sanctified, made holy by God's work. So that's your preview of our worship today and the message that we want to focus in on. The order of service is in the service folder. We're going to turn to that uh, invocation and ask for God's blessings because he gives us that promise that when we call on his name, he's with us. So we begin. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare Your praise. Hasten to save me, O God. O Lord, come quickly to help me. O Lord, we confess our sins to You. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed You in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve Your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner." God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us. And He's given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's continue with our opening hymn now. Speak, O Lord. Thank you. 
We go to our Lord now with the prayer of the day. Gracious Lord, our refuge and strength, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in all temptation. Defend them against all their enemies. And bestow on the church your saving peace through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This time I invite the kids to come up front for the children's message this morning. You're right here, huh? You can sit right there in the chair. Come on up. I'm calling you. I'm calling you to come on up. There we go. Thank you for answering the call. And what I'm talking about is what you're going to hear a little bit about today in the Bible lesson, the Kingdom Kids, the call of Moses, and also what we're all called to do. You too, you're called. You're called to do something very special. Okay. Now, when you're called for dinner, what does that mean? When someone calls you for dinner, what are you supposed to do? Come. Come. Yeah, you're supposed to come to the dinner table, right? Now, that calling might be in different ways. You might, mom not, might not even have to say, dinner's ready because you're smelling it. And you know, oh, that smells good. And you're just, you're at the table already and she didn't have to say a word, right? Sometimes, maybe if you're outside, she'll say to dad, Call the kids in for dinner. And you might hear dad's voice. Hey, it's dinner time. And they know, and you're called, and you know, I hear that call. You have to come. Well, today in your Bible lesson, God called Moses in a pretty amazing way. There is this light glowing on the mountain. And he went up to see what it was. And God talked to him directly through a burning bush. What was amazing, that bush didn't burn up. God was there. God made Himself known in that way and talked to Moses and said, I want to use you, Moses. And God listened. Or Moses listened. Not at first. You'll hear about that if you go to Kingdom Kids. Today we're celebrating, as you heard me talk about at the beginning, the Reformation. And we don't worship anybody, any man. But we are thankful that God called Martin Luther. And He called him in a special way. He didn't say, hey, Luther, I need to use you. He didn't speak. The, but he gave Luther this loud conscience, this voice that said, that's not right. That's not right. And it made Luther keep trying to find what was right. And you know where he found that? In the Bible, yeah. And God called Luther to keep reading the Bible and hearing the truth. And the truth is that God loves us. And He calls us also, every one of us, to hear His words and to know that He loves us every day. Just like He loved Moses, just like He loved David, just like He loved Elizabeth and Mary. We're going to talk about them in Bible class today. So, God loves us all. And He calls us to trust Him, to hear His word, and to know we're saved. And that gives us peace, a peace that makes us smile every day. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for your love. Thank you for the blessings of your word. May you guide and encourage us each and every day. We keep not only our ears, but our hearts always open to your call. In your name we pray, amen. All right, thank you. You guys can head back to Kingdom Kids or just sit with mom and dad, your choice, or grandma and grandpa. But... We're doing the story time now, so awesome. We continue now with our focus on this Reformation Sunday under what's referred to as the five solas of the Reformation. Again, you see them listed up there, and we're going to kind of, we go in that order. Scripture alone, faith alone, grace alone, through Christ alone, to God be the glory alone. Right? 
solo. When you're going on a solo trip, a solo flight, usually you go by yourself, right? That's the emphasis of solo, and so you think it's all alone. That's it. But they build on each other. Right? Someone goes on a solo trip. They might be by themselves, but there's a lot of other people around them helping them in unassuming ways. When we focus in on the solos of the Reformation today, we see how they build on each other, how they complement each other, but we also recognize the, 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 the focus. And, and what it is, is again understanding what God desires us to truly know and believe. Not, not because He's this powerful, almighty ruler who wants us to be subject to Him, but because He wants us to know He really loves us and He's got this all figured out for us. And we need to trust that. So may God bless us in our meditation today as we take a time, not for a long sermon time, but for five simple readings with a hymn accompaniment that helps us to treasure and understand why God has blessed us this way. So this morning we focus in on the five solas, the alones of the Reformation. Our first emphasis is Scriptura, Scripture alone. The focus, the reading and the meditation is based on the Apostle Paul's words to his dear co-worker and friend Timothy. In 2 Timothy 3, he reminds him and us How from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. We are saved. We are saved as the Scriptures declare by faith alone, which we'll get into in just a moment. But we know that because we rely only on what the Scriptures say. And our emphasis there is, because as Paul was inspired by the Holy Spirit to remind us and to give us this answer, why do we say the Bible is God's Word? Well, right there. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, and training in righteousness. It's useful. Why? Because it's God-breathed. We know we are saved because of what the Scriptures tell us. And that's it. It's a great relief. Your faith and your salvation is not based on what I tell you. Your faith and salvation and the faith and salvation of your children and your grandchildren and your friends and family members and relatives that you witness to and display your love of God is not dependent on you and you coming up with the right words, the right explanation, the the, the right application so that they go, oh, thank you, now I believe. It's it's not up to us to come up with some special, unique way to express this incredible philosophy, this idea, this concept that we've developed or need to develop in our mind today in 2021 to speak to the world. It's not up to us in that way. The foundation... The, the, the bedrock of this truth that you and I are saved because of the love of God is known only through the Scriptures. And those Scriptures, as this verse reminds us, are based on the true words of God. All Scripture is God-breathed. Yes, God used these different men. He called Moses. Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible. How could that be? He wasn't there in Genesis in the garden. He didn't know all those people in numbers. How was he able to give that detail? 
Because God inspired him. Verbally inspired him. And everything that Moses wrote down in that regard, God gave to him. And so we've got Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy because God gave it to Moses said, here, this is how it all began. By faith we know. By faith we understand what the Scriptures tell us and believe that, yes, all Scripture is God's Word. And it is through that Scripture that we know God's love and His plan of salvation for us. It is through the Scriptures that we hear and know God loves us and has saved us and has a purpose and a plan as we reminded the children just before. That we are called. Called by God to love Him, to trust Him, and to serve Him in all we do. Through Scripture alone. We continue with our hymn response, hymn 293. God's Word is our great heritage. Second, sola, alone, faith. We read from John chapter 20, verse 31. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in His name. As I said, this this concept of alone would think we just would have one point and focus on it. And the way we do, it's just that we keep building, right? All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, correcting, rebuking, and training in righteousness so that the child of God might be thoroughly equipped. That's the blessing of Scripture. But our focus there with Scripture is, that's all we use. That's our foundation that's our rock and on that rock we hear john in his gospel say now jesus did a lot of other things but these are written i've been inspired by the holy spirit to share to write these things so that in reading them you may believe that jesus is the messiah and that by believing you have life in his name believing this is it faith And faith alone saves. It's a faith that comes from God, not from my own reasoning and understanding and development. Faith is a gift from God. And it is by that faith that I can turn and say, yep, the Bible is God's Word. I need that faith. Because as any academia professor of logic would express to us, this whole thing doesn't work. Because we're saying we believe the Bible is God's Word because the Bible says it's God's Word. Well, you can't take what you're proving and use it to prove itself. That's not logical in our academia world. But see, this is where they build on each other. By faith alone, a faith that I don't develop and work and develop by my own reasoning and intellect, but a faith that's a gift from God. 
That faith alone comes to me and I say, I believe. A faith that God plants in our heart. The majority of us, when our Christian parents, in love and trust in God, brought us to a baptismal font, and we were baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that in that sacrament, that that sacred act that God instituted, the Holy Spirit planted that seed of faith. That, That faith that grows through the working of the Holy Spirit as we use His Word. See? So when Scripture alone builds with that faith alone. And by faith. And faith is it. By having that faith, by believing what those Scriptures tell us, that Jesus is our Savior. That yes, that this One whom we're going to be getting ready to prepare and celebrate His coming again, His first coming at Christmas, right? That's right around the corner. Can you believe it? It's the last day of October. Tomorrow's November 1st. What comes after November? December and Christmas time. All right. It's coming fast. Right? It's coming fast. And that celebration of this incredible event that Christ came to be our Savior. The Bible tells us this. What? A virgin gives birth to a son? What kind of fairy tale is that, we might ask? That's what the world asks. It's not a fairy tale. And it's not a myth. It's true. And it's real. Because the Bible tells us this is what happened. My reasoning, my feeble human mind might say, impossible. And it is. But nothing's impossible with God. Jesus came. Jesus lived. Jesus suffered and died on that cross for me, for you, for the whole world. We know that because of faith that is there. And it is by that faith and alone, only by that faith, that we're able to believe that, that we're able to accept that and trust in that. And in believing, we have life. Eternal life in God's name. This is our comfort. This is our trust. This is a comfort that our family received yesterday, or sorry, two days ago, it seems like just yesterday, when we gathered up in Watertown, Wisconsin, for Stephanie's mom's funeral, I got a note. Someone, I, I, I was kind of in a fuzz yesterday, and they said it kind of sounds like Steph died when I wrote that mail message last yesterday. And uh, so I reread. I said eh, maybe, but she didn't. But her mom did. Her mom passed away. Her mom was called home to heaven. Right? Tomorrow we're going to gather here again to celebrate God's grace in a sudden calling. No one expected it. Of Mr. Mark Cars. These things aren't supposed to happen, but they do. How can we go on? How can we handle this? By faith that says, God is awesome. God is great. His way, His timing, His plan is perfect. I might not always agree with it. I might not always understand it. But by faith, I accept it. By faith I know my God is my God. He loves me. He loves you. And He loves the world. And this truth is ours by the faith He's given to us. Why He gave that to us, we'll talk about in just a moment. We're going to continue right now with Him 404. Faith is a living power from heaven.
Right here in the middle is the glue. Right here in the middle is that that why. How is this possible? Why, why would God give us His Holy Word in such an amazing way? Why would He declare and tell us that by faith we're saved? Because, as we'll sing in just a moment, because of His amazing grace. We read from Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so no one can boast. By grace alone. Tomorrow, as I made reference, we'll be having a memorial service. The purpose of that memorial service is not to raise up that brother in Christ and look at all the wonderful, great things he did and stood for. Not, not, Not to emphasize that he was this great husband, this great father, this loving grandfather. Those services are there to give us comfort and assurance and the reminder of this incredible, wonderful truth. What was Mark dealing with? What what was he suffering with? What were his problems? Man, he was in the hospital and then in a facility for, I think this started back in June or July. That was a long time. Well, he must have done some bad things, right? God was teaching him a lesson. God was punishing him. These kind of reasonings and thinkings, this this comes from our human, weak, feeble mind. And there isn't any bit of truth to that by what the Scriptures tell us. Mark wasn't guilty Nor is anyone guilty of some heinous, terrible, wicked sin that God is punishing you with this problem, this trial, this challenge, this sickness, whatever it is that's going on in your life. And we all have them. Why? Because this is not heaven yet. But heaven is our home. And we have the guarantee that heaven is our home because of what Christ has done for us. And He did that for us because of this. By grace, you've been saved. The definition of grace? God's undeserved love. Friends, this applies to every one of us. Every one of us is saved. Not by the works we've done. Not by the things we've accomplished. Not by how many Sunday schools we attended as kids, how many worship service, how many Christmas programs we participated in. Not how many classes we've gone to. How many attendance stars I have in my own personal tracking record. Because you're the only one that tracks that. No one else does. Not even pastor. None of those things. None of those things matter when it comes to our salvation. I'll share with you in just a few moments why it's a good thing to do and why we do it. But the emphasis, the core of which the church had gone away from in its early history, and that God called Martin Luther to say, hello, was this emphasis of trying to keep members dutiful and committed that they put an emphasis on, these are the things you have to do for God to love you and for you to be saved. And that was a lie. Luther was called by God because he had this loud conscience that was beating himself up and he was, he was confused. Why would this 
awesome God who sent His Son hate me so much because I fail and I try my best, but I fail every day. And He went running around and what did God do? God led him to the Scriptures. God led him to His Word and He opened up and He started reading verses like this. And the Holy Spirit, not Luther, because he wasn't some awesome, intelligent, he was a smart man, but it was God. God gets all the credit, and Luther gave him all the credit. He came back to this understanding. One of these key foundations, and it's right here in the middle for a purpose. Sola gratia. Grace alone. Friends, that's it. Not by our works. Not by our deeds. Solely, completely, totally, 100% relying on God's love. By grace, you've been saved. Through faith, they come together. God's grace... His undeserved love for us has sent us that faith. And by that faith, we are saved. We know that because the Scriptures tell us that. Those solos, those alones, build on one another. Let's continue. In marveling at God's amazing grace as we join in those verses. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. All Scripture is God-breathed. In that Scripture, we hear of this incredible, wonderful, necessary truth. Jesus declares, and we answered the question, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through Me. This is why Paul was inspired in our previous verse to say, we're saved by faith alone, not by works, so that no one can boast. I don't boast in my works. I don't boast in my accomplishments. I don't boast in anything when I compare myself to Christ because there's nothing to boast in. 
I don't do anything to get myself any bit closer to that way. I can't do anything to make it so that family, friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, whom God has called me to serve as your pastor, I don't push you. I don't make it so that you get there. It's all Christ. In Christ alone. He's it. 100%. I'll break math rules. 150%. 200%. It's just Him. He's the way. The truth. And the life. Everything He did. Everything He said was done for us. He is our Savior who gave Himself for us. And He's it. We live today in a world that wants to promote and emphasize diversity. Be respectful of everyone. Be respectful of their ways, their thoughts, their ideas, their philosophies. You know what? The Bible says that. The Bible tells you and I to speak the truth in love. To show love and kindness, respect. Look at Jesus. Look at how He again ministered and cared for all the people that He came into contact with. He loved them. He showed nothing but care and compassion and patience and love. And He did all of that with never ever once compromising this truth that we focus in on right now. He answered them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father. No one comes to the Father. No one gets to heaven except through Me. This hasn't changed because God doesn't change. That's a good thing. And so we hold to the truth. We hold to the truth of the Scriptures because they're God's Word. And we don't have the right. In fact, we have the clear warning not to ever change them. Not to take things out of God's Word. Not to add things to God's Word. But to hold it true. And at the core is this truth. Jesus is it. In Christ alone are we saved. There is no other way. There is no other gods. People haven't invented. People have developed other gods. But they're all small g's. And they're all made up. And they're all fictional. And I don't just stand before you or those that are joining us on our streaming this morning. I say that every day in every way. And I don't say it to be racist, to be a bigot, to be uncaring, or anything else. Say it in love. I believe it because it's God's love for us. I I don't have to stress out and, and worry and wonder if I've done enough. If I'm good enough. Nothing. It's all on Christ. He's it. He's my Savior. He's your Savior. He's the Savior of the world. And the only way to be saved, the only way to be in the presence of the Father in heaven for eternity is to know Him and trust Him every day. To rely on this wonderful, glorious truth. Because it takes all the pressure, all the burden off of us. Because He took it all on Himself on that cross. He endured it. Friends, He endured what hell truly is. Being separated. Being cut off from God. He endured that for those hours on that cross when He cried out, My God, My God, why have You forsaken Me? Again, the the, the mystery that doesn't make any human logical sense that is so impossible for this feeble mind to grasp is the truth because the Scripture tells us. He gave His life for us. 
He did it, and it counts. And He is it. There is no other way. And we base our truth, we base our foundation upon which we build our life on this wonderful, important, necessary truth. It is about Christ and Christ alone. With that thought, we join in singing those four verses of that beautiful hymn, In Christ Alone. Not by works, but by faith. Faith alone we are saved through what Christ has done. So what are we doing here? Why are we here? If nothing we do matters, if the work 
that we try to do, the, the faithfulness we try to show, the, the love, the care, the compassion, none of that matters. What are we doing here? Are we wasting our time? If the pastor is going to be bold, so bold to say nothing, no matter how good and great, how generous and kind it might be, none of that matters. That doesn't get you one step closer into heaven because we are saved by faith alone in what Christ has done for us. That's it. What are we doing? This is what we're doing. This is our why right here. right? Jude chapter 1, verse 25 declares, To the only God our Savior be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. To God be the glory. Friends, this is our why. This is why we heed what the Scriptures tell us in Hebrews 10. Don't give up meeting together. Gather together to encourage each other. To build each other up. But we we build each other up by reminding each other how awesome Christ is. We, We build and encourage each other up and assure you that no, God is not hating you. God is not punishing you. God is not turning His back on you even though you're going through some unimaginable trial, calamity, heartache, hardship that you are in right now or have been in. We gather together to encourage each other, to build each other up, to spur one another on towards love and good deeds because that's what the Scriptures tell us. And we do it not to pat myself on the back. We do it To God's glory. We do it to express our love and our thanks and to express our trust in everything He is telling us again today. To God be the glory. To live and express that truth and that glory in our lives. Not because it's going to save me. Not because it's maybe going to get me in a, in, a, in a better room that Jesus has built for me in heaven because, oh, I did a bunch of extra good things. We, we push that all to the side. We are saved by grace alone. By what Christ has done. And it's ours because of the faith He's given to us. And we know this wonderful truth because of the Scriptures. The Scriptures that God has blessed us with the Scriptures, the true Word of God that He has seen to it has remained true for us even today after all those years and all the different translations. The truth of God's Word is there for us today. And what do we have to do? Believe it. And even the believing becomes easy because it isn't up to me. It's up to the faith that God plants in our heart. So again, we've got that beautiful list. The five solos that build on each other. Why? To God be the glory. May God grant that we always remember the why. Why our ministry is important. Why we gather together. Why we present our offerings of love and thanks to our Lord. That not only that we continue to benefit from God's incredible grace. That we don't all, that that we take the opportunities that God gives us to gather together around that means of grace. The means by which the Holy Spirit puts that grace into our lives and our hearts. Through the Word and through the sacraments of baptism and Holy Communion. These are the truths that God has given to us. These are the tools and the blessings that He uses to assure and make sure we stay His always even though we are living in a sin-filled world in Satan's playground. He keeps us safe. He keeps us secure even though this world is falling down around us. And we acknowledge that. We praise that in our lives to His glory and honor. And we build each other up. And we announce that truth and we share it with our friends, our neighbors, our relatives, our associates, because it's something so good we don't want to keep it to ourselves. So we invite them. We invite them to come and join us for worship. We invite them to come and join us for Bible class. We assure them that we're going to keep them in our prayers. Then do it. Pray for them. 
Pray with them right then and there. Show them you're serious about it, that it isn't just a, oh, have a great day, I'll pray for you. Friends, grab their hands sometimes, right then and there, and say, I want to pray with you right now. I see the look. Some are scared to death right now, going, oh, that's the pastor's job. Oh, trust the Holy Spirit. Give glory to God in living your faith. And the way that this touches people and helps them is incredible. And we give it to God's glory, but we benefit. Because our heart is filled with joy in expressing and sharing that love, that love of God to others. But I don't do it for myself. I don't do it for the praise and the acclimates. I do it to remember the why. God loves me. God saved me. And I want to glorify Him every day of my life. To God be the glory. We continue with that, those verses of the hymn, Not Unto Us. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father. Amen. I invite you now to please stand. We turn to page 11 in the service folder. We'll join together in making confession of our faith today with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, Eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us and for our salvation He came down from heaven, 
was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day He rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Congregation may be seated. We continue now by bringing our offerings of love and thanks to our Lord. Mighty and eternal God, when the time had fully come, you set your Son to take our place under the demands of the law and to endure the just punishment for our sins. For our sake, you accepted his sacrifice on that cross and raised him from death to splendor. When the time had fully come, you bestowed your Spirit on your people as a testimony that you had called them to proclaim the gospel to every creature. Equipped and encouraged, they carried the word of salvation into all the world. Time had fully come, you raised up your servant, Martin Luther, to restore the pure and right teachings of the Scriptures to a struggling and troubled church. You renewed your people with the light of your love, and your holy church grew and prospered throughout the world. The time had fully come, you made our forefathers bold to take their stand on the truth of your word. You have blessed their sons and daughters and have enabled us to preserve and proclaim that saving gospel. Let this be a time, O Lord when you renew us again by word and sacrament, when you reform our hearts and minds and in 
you restore to us the joy of fellowship and service. Grant to us in this age and in this place the courage of the apostles, the steadfastness of the reformers, and the dedication of those who have gone before us. The Lord our God be with us as he was with our fathers. May he never leave us nor forsake us. May this be a time, O Lord, for confession and repentance. May you forgive us for the apathy that harms our faith at times and hinders our work. Forgive us for boasting of our past achievements and for blaming others for the present problems. Rid us of indifference to public worship and Bible study. Destroy the distrust that so often plagues us and shatter every thought and word that might harm the unity of the Spirit, the bond of peace that is ours through your gift of love. May you create in us pure hearts, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within us. And may this be the time, O Lord, when we recommit and reconsecrate ourselves to the ministry of the gospel. May we know and find that joy and unity, zeal for work and success in our labors to your glory and honor. God, be gracious to us, bless us, and make us Make your face shine on us, that your ways be known on earth, and all glory be for you. Lord, to you we come, seeking these blessings, and asking you hear us as we join in that prayer you taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you, keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you, be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen, amen, amen. We close our service with a closing hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
Good morning again. Good morning. Thank you for taking the time to join us for our Reformation services.